And now it's time for Spargo Nanomedical with CEO Mats Hansen. Welcome Mats. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, happy to be here and to present Spargo Nanomedical at Biostock Life Science Summit today. Uh, today I will walk you through a little bit about our technology, the evidence that we have for that technology and the pipeline projects that we are running based on it. I will say a few words about the market and uh, end with wh where we are as a company right now and the next steps ahead. So with Spargo Nanomedical we have developed a nanotheranostic platform for personalized medicine. We are utilizing the fact that we can target solid tumors by means of physiological targeting, uh, meaning that we utilize the blood flow and the need for nutrient supply to the growing tumors in order to direct functional non nanoparticles to the tumors. These nanoparticles carry a load, in our case metal ions, that makes them functional in a sense that we can use them for both diagnostic purposes and for therapeutic purposes. So we can, using this platform material, we can direct uh, functional nanoparticles to growing tumors and potentiate precision radiotherapy and diagnostics of tumors. So the evidence we have, does this work? Well, it does. We have started uh, out with a contrast agent for MRI uh, and we use that uh, in solid tumors. And we have proven that this agent works to, in a way that, that uh, visualize solid breast tumors very, very well. And this confirms the accumulation of our, our functional nanoparticles in the tumors and opens up for use in both diagnostics and therapeutics. So based on these very, very uh, positive findings, uh, we are running two projects basic, uh, currently. Uh, Spagopix, which is a contrast agent for MRI diagnostics. And with that project, we have the aim to make a more provide more precision into the visualization of tumors than what is possible with MRI today. With Tumorad, our thera therapy project, we can enable internal radiation therapy of solid tumors, which is often called radionuclide treatment. Or and here, the, the goal is obviously to provide a more effective treatment to metastatic and aggressive tumors, maintaining good quality of life. So I will talk a little bit about the projects and I will start out with Spagopix. And again, coming back to the very positive findings that we have in the interim results of the ongoing clinical trial with this agent. Here at the images, you can see to the, to the left, uh, an MRI image of a solid breast tumor with no contrast in it. And you can see that the, the tumor itself is there, but it's not really visible in, in any great detail. With our product candidate SM132D, you can see on the other hand that the tumor is very well identified. You can see the tumor margins very clearly. Uh, you can see that it, it, it has very good precision in, in the way that there is no background enhancement. And this, to us, opens up for, for use in many other solid tumors, as well as marking this as a uh, validation uh, of our uh, platform technology. And more importantly, it provides a validation of use also for therapeutic reasons, uh, therapeutic applications. We have also seen that we, we can obtain very nice images in, of, of the pancreas. And this is, uh, opens up for, for expansion of indications, of course, uh, and it opens up a potential for high resolution imaging in this organ where there is today no uh, no good contrast agent available. So this is something we are exploring further as well as we go along. 
And the status in the project right now is that we, we are pursuing the clinical trial, Spagopix, uh, here in Sweden. Uh, safety and efficacy, of course, are key endpoints. And as I've already explained, the interim results we've got so far indicate the clinically relevant MRI uh, contrast of, of breast cancer tumors. And the, again, I can't stress enough how important this is as a validation of our technology platform. Then, of course, as I mentioned, we also have the uh, positive contrast in the pancreas, which opens up a very interested, interesting uh, way for, for uh, indication expansion. Uh, the current status is that the study continues and, and we uh, look forward to the next interim results uh, that will hopefully validate uh, the platform even further. And uh, just as a kind of uh, wrapping up of, of, of where we are today, so we've got clinical proof of concept for SN132D uh, in solid tumor, which is very important to state. If we switch to, other, to our other project, and, and perhaps more interesting right now, uh, Tumorad. This is our therapy project where we aim to provide a new radionuclide treatment for aggressive cancer, or I should say against aggressive cancer perhaps. Again, we are using physiological targeting, uh, and we are using our functional nanoparticles to target radionuclide therapy to the growing tumors by systemic treatment. This means that we can target not only the mother tumor but also metastatic tumors within the body, which is not possible with traditional radiotherapy. We have preclinical evidence that this works very well and that we have good uptake in the tumor of the, of the particles. We have shown that we can delay tumor growth and to that we can provide extended survival in a, a preclinical model of aggressive breast cancer. Uh, we have observed very low toxicity of the cold uh, nanomaterial, meaning the particles themselves are not toxic uh, at, at the doses given so far. This opens up the, for the favorable scaling to clinically relevant dosing, which is very important. So this, this appeared to be useful uh, in the clinic as well. And the status right now is that we are moving quickly towards clinical development with SN201, which is the product candidate for Tumorad. Uh, we have the preclinical data, which are further supported by the data I've shown with Spagopix uh, in, in the clinic that supports translation of this project into clinical uh, trials. And right now we are working on the clinical plan, uh, the clinical trial protocol, uh, and the aim is to start the trial next year in patients with late stage cancer. We are concluding the ongoing preclinical regulatory program uh, in order to support the clinical trial application. And we are also working with GMP production uh, at an external CMO. Uh, the regulatory documentation that will be necessary is underway, uh, and so is the uh, feasibility investigation at different sites, clinical sites, where we can uh, hopefully run the trial uh, next year. So the aim is to start a phase one slash two trial during 2022. And I, I'm very happy to say that this is progressing very well and according to plan. Uh, we raised capital earlier this year in order to progress Tumorad as quickly as possible to the clinic. And this is actually what we are delivering on right now. A few words about the, the radionuclide therapy market. So what we've seen uh, recently, and this is a, uh, an article that was published in Nature Biotechnology earlier this year, uh, reflecting the increased interest in this area. And this is further corroborated by the, the deals that has been done over the past uh, six or seven years with Sofigo, 
Lutathera and LU PSMA 617. The two latter ones uh, by Novartis and Sofigo by Bayer. And, and we see many other deals as well in this field. So I would say there, there is a rise in interest in the radionuclide field. So with that, I would say that we are very well positioned to uh, take our project to the next level. Uh, we listed at NASDAQ First North earlier this year in, 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 at the same time we raised capital to proceed to Moratu Clinic. Uh, what we are looking forward to now is the readout of the clinical trial with Sp Spagopix <clears throat> and of course proceeding to Murad to clinical phase as quickly as possible. Uh, we are looking uh, to partner Sp the Spagopix project as we go along and further down the line of course also to grow the pipeline. So with that I'd like to conclude. Uh, we think that we have a very promising te technology uh, where we now have clinical evidence that it works as we say it will. We have very interesting projects uh, running in both diagnostics and more importantly in therapy uh, where the market uh, potential is, is huge. So uh, with that I would like to thank you for listening and uh, happy to take questions. Thank you Mats. Um, let's start with uh, uh, what's the main advantage uh, of your technology compared to existing diagnostics and, and therapies? Well, I would say it's it's the fact that we we have a functional nanomaterial that we can uh, target to solid tumors, and and the fact that we can uh, provide a means to treat solid tumors, even metastatic ones, uh, with. Uh, radiotherapy, which is basically not uh, possible today. Interesting. Um, um, and, and you talked about the high interest in, in the in the radionuclide market. Um, how will you position Tumorad in that context? Yeah, that, that's that's a very interesting question uh, because what we see today are targeted therapies that are kind of limited to certain indications. So FIGO, for instance, uh, bone metastasis, Lutathera for neuroendocrine tumors. With Tumorad and, and the physiological targeting mechanism, we have a more general way of attacking the tumors, if you wish. So that opens up for use in other tumor types that are not currently uh, uh, available for that kind of treatment. So, so we, we see this, we see a very broad potential with Tumorad in that sense. So speaking of the, of the deals you mentioned in your presentation, how relevant are, are them? Are they for you? For you? I, I, I think generally speaking they reflect the, the interest that is there from Big Pharma in the field. Uh, I mean Novartis spent more than six billion dollars in, in this field uh, over the past two, three years. Uh, and we see other big pharma companies. Bayer has a huge uh, early pipeline uh, of, of this type of, of therapies. And we see smaller companies coming up as well. So, so I would say it is relevant in the sense that it shows a growing market and it shows a, an interest from the industry in, in general in this field. Okay, so, so now you're focused on Tumorad project. Uh, and then what will be the most important activities for you uh, in the coming year? Uh, it will certainly be to, to uh, advance the project into the clinic uh, as quickly as possible. And uh, I think we're, I, as I was saying, we, we, I'm, I'm very happy that the, all, all the activities are proceeding according to plan, especially since that is what we promised the market earlier this year. So what, more specifically what we are doing is we are finalizing the, the preclinical program. Uh, I expect that to be done um, uh, before the end of this year. Uh, we are running new uh, efficacy studies in, in further models to show the, the breadth of the, the scope of the project. And we, we are, uh, the GMP production is ongoing for clinical supply and, and of course all the compilation of, of uh, regulatory documents and, and uh, supporting the clinical trial application. So a lot of things ongoing. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank, thank you Mats uh, for presenting. Thank you very much.